Hey, this is Coach Boydston, and today we're going to continue our study on plant reproduction and specifically looking at the angiosperms. We looked a little bit at the history of some evolution of the plants and the plant group or kingdom. Uh, we looked really closely at gymnosperms, which we said reproduced with what we call naked seed, uh, meaning their seed was not housed in a fruit. Today we're going to be looking at angiosperms, and these are plants that reproduce with a flower. Uh, and particularly, um, that's what it means for it to be an angiosperm, but its seeds are going to be housed in what we would call a fruit. And so let's get going and looking at that. Um, the first thing I want to look at here is the parts to a flower because the flower is the reproductive structure of that plant. And the first thing I want to look at is what we call the stamen. This is going to be the male reproductive structure of our flower. And it consists of two parts, the anther and the filament. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the anther. If you look right here, we have the anther, which is on the top. This anther, what is its job? Its job is to produce the pollen. And we know pollen is going to be carrying a sperm, which is the male reproductive cell, which is going to have to pollinate the female egg at some point for a reproduction to take place. And so we have the anther here. And if we slide down, we have the filament. The filament is this thing here that is holding up the anther. And so these two combined make what we call the stamen, and the stamen is the male portion of the flower. All right, let's look over here. This is going to be the pistil. All right, these three things here, the stigma, style, and ovary, those three together are going to make up the pistil, which is the female part or reproductive structure of the flower. So if we look over here at the top, you have the stigma. The stigma is sticky. Um, the reason it's sticky is the pollen needs to have something to stick to. So it's moist, it's sticky. Um, you have the style which runs down through here. This is where the pollen is going to make its way down to the ovary. And then you have the ovary right here. And inside the ovary we have an ovule and the ovule holds the egg. And so there's the ovule there. And so the, the egg is what needs to get fertilized for our plant to reproduce. A couple other parts that we have here. We're all familiar with the petal. All right, if we look here at the top, these are our petals. You know, if these weren't, things weren't so pretty, I wouldn't have to buy flowers every Valentine's Day, but they are pretty, all right? And there's a reason for that. We'll talk about here in just a minute how it helps pollinate the flower. Um, its job is, though, to look pretty. Um, also, if you look down here at the bottom, we have a thing called the sepals. Now, sepals are what protect uh, that bud as it's maturing. Let's take a closer look. If you look over here, I have some lilies, and a couple of these are open and then several of them are not. These ones that are closed, what you see there is you see the sepals. They're closed and the bud is on the inside. Now when that flower opens, those sepals are going to open out of the way and the flower will become visible. Um, now lilies are unique. You can kind of see here, um, they actually have their sepals, when they open, look a lot like their petals. And so it's really hard to tell the difference between everything that's going on there. So if we take a closer look though at a real lily, Let's walk over here. Um, you'll notice, and like I said, they look, the petals and sepals look really, really similar. And actually, this right here, right here, and right here, that right there is my sepals, and then the petals here on the top. So those opened up first, and then the petals opened up second um, when we were looking at that. Um, the other thing is, I just want to show you what a real male part looks like here. If we zoom in here, you can see we have the anther which we said is the portion that makes the pollen, and then we have the filament which travels right down here which holds up the anther. And so that together makes the stamen which is the male reproductive structure. Right next to it, right here in the middle, we have the uh, pistil, and the pistil consisted of three parts. We said we had the stigma here at the top, that sticky part, we had the style, and we have the ovary there at the base. We can't quite see it there in that picture. And so I just wanted to give you what a real flower would look like with these parts. So the flower is the reproductive structure and it consists of the male and the female part both right there in that flower. As opposed to the gymnosperms we talked about last time that you had the male cone and the female cone. Uh, these things are grouped together here within the flower. The next thing is, is this, is pollination is going to be the transfer of that pollen from the anther to the stigma on the female part of the flower, on that pistil. And there's two main ways that that happens, and that's gonna be insects is gonna be one way. So if we look over here on the left, I have some bees. Now bees help pollinate all kinds of flowers because they like to fly in. They're not trying to pollinate, they actually like the nectar and the smell and they get it for food, but they will come in contact with, and you can see this picture here, this poor bee is covered in anther. 
or anther or pollen, all right, produced by the anther. And so he's covered in that. And if he flies to another flower and starts messing around and digging in there trying to get some food, and that pollen rubs all over the stigma, it's going to stick, and he just helped pollinate that flower. So pollination can happen by way of insect. And one key thing here is if a flower pollinates by insects, it's probably going to be really, really pretty because it has to have a way to attract the insects. So it's going to be colorful, or it's going to smell real good, or it's going to have a really good nectar. All right. Now, the, the other way, which you see over here on the right, is going to be by wind. And so these, you'll notice this is not as pretty and colorful. If we look in a little closer here, and I'll just kind of circle, um, this is the reproductive structure here for this ragweed. I hate this stuff. Around September, somewhere in there in the fall, this stuff will start blowing pollen everywhere. And if you're allergic to it, uh, good luck. So, but you'll notice they're not as pretty. And they're also, their reproductive structure is really, really exposed. It's not really hidden within a uh, flower. And that's on purpose. It allows for wind to blow that stuff in the air. And so these generally release a lot of pollen in the air because they are pollinating, pollinating by way of wind. All right, so that's the two ways we pollinate. Another thing about pollination is this, this difference between what we would call self-pollination and cross-pollination. So a plant can pollinate itself or it can cross-pollinate over to another plant. So the first one I want to look at here is self-pollination. You can see it mentioned here and here. There's two ways it's showing us here. We have plant A here and we have plant B up here. In this example here, the pollen from this flower is actually pollinating itself. So it is pollinating the female part of that same exact flower. That's self-pollination. This plant is pollinating itself. Another way it can pollinate itself, we have the pollen from this flower coming down and fertilizing the stigma or the pistil, the female part of this flower, which happens to be all on plant A. So again, that plant is self-pollinating. So you can imagine what cross-pollination means. Cross-pollination is going to be where the pollen off of a flower of one plant, such as plant A here, travels and pollination occurs on a second plant, like in plant B here. And so that would be cross-pollination. The next thing I want to look at here is just uh, we have a little bit of an animation. Uh, just to show you this is process, we have an insect. He comes in contact with the pollen, happens to rub against the stigma, the sticky part of the pistil there. The, the sperm is released from that pollen. It travels down the style. And then it's going to fertilize the egg there in the ovule of that ovary there on the part of the female pistil. And if that ovary and that egg gets fertilized, we know flowers don't last real long. They're going to weather. They're going to fall apart. And then, but if it fertilized, then with the right conditions, that ovary is going to ripen into a fruit. And so in the case of an apple tree, it produces an apple. So when you eat an apple, you are eating the ripened ovary or ripened reproductive structure there of that plant. So enjoy your apple. Um, you also will notice right there in the middle, we have the seeds, which are right here, and then um, you have the ovary, which is around it, which protects that seed. So again, when I said gymnosperms and, and we had the pine cones, we called those naked seeds. Those were seeds. Those were open and they were visible. These seeds are housed within a fruit. And so angiosperms reproduce by way of flowers, and their seeds are found in fruit. And so uh, the last thing I want to look at, though, here is this the life cycle of different types of flowering plants. Um, and I have them listed in order from shortest life cycle to longest life cycle. So let's take a look at annuals first. Annuals here, like the pansy, all right, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the flower. Pansies, all right, are, are, are beautiful flowers. They usually, people will plant these in the fall here in Texas, North Texas. And uh, they only survive for that one season. And when the summer hits, those things die. They don't come back. You have to replant them every year. So if it's an annual, think of it as I got to replant this thing annually. It's only going to last one year. The one thing about annuals, though, because their life cycle is so short, they generally are really beautiful um, because they need to really attract those pollinators and get that process of reproduction going very quickly because they know they don't have a whole lot of time to live. The next one you're going to see here is going to be the biennials. Bi meaning two, annual meaning two years, all right? So bi meaning two. Um, the example I gave here is a carrot. And uh, one thing we know about a carrot, if you didn't know this, when you eat a carrot, the part of the plant you're eating is the root. And they actually call this a tap root. I mean, it's a very thick, you know, it's not like those fibrous ones. This is actually a very thick 
uh, root. So you have tap roots and fibrous. Carrots have a tap root. But uh, what happens is, biennial, it has a two-year life cycle, meaning the first year it's not even going to flower. All it's going to do is put all of its energy towards really producing and building up that root. And that's why carrots have such a thick, big root uh, as a carrot plant. And then the second year, they're going to flower. And you can see the flowers here on a carrot. And they're going to look to reproduce that second year before they die off and they're done. So they have a two-year life cycle as opposed to just one. And then finally, the, the last one here is the perennials. Perennials come back every year. And I'm a football coach, and so uh, I hear this term of, you know, happen all the time. And football, uh, right now, Alabama, I would say, is, is running the show. Uh, Alabama was, is what I would call a perennial powerhouse. Okay, what does that mean? They are a powerhouse. They are a good football team every single year, it seems like, as of recent. And so perennial means it comes back every year. And so in the case of these daisies here, which uh, we have here in Texas, um, these daisies are going to flower at a certain point of the year. They'll go dormant. They'll come back. Um, most of our yards here in North Texas, we have Bermuda grass. Bermuda, you'll notice, grows all summer and then all winter. It goes dormant, but then it always comes back. That is a perennial. A lot of our trees are perennials. And so this is the different life cycle of these plants. And the main thing with angiosperms is they're going to reproduce with the flower. They are flowering plants. And most plants on this planet are angiosperms and do reproduce by way of flower. So um, hopefully that was helpful. That was just reproduction in angiosperms. And I'm Coach Boydston. I hope you have a good day.